Hi, in this video I'll give you an update of the Open Garage project, specifically the Open Garage hardware version 2.0 and the new software features in firmware 1.2.0. The very first Open Garage was released six years ago. Since then there have been a number of changes. On the hardware side, the original electromechanical relay has been replaced by a solid state relay which is surface mount, much smaller in size, and provides better reliability in the long term. Also, the original terminal block for connecting the door button wires has been replaced by direct wiring onto the pin pads of the circuit boards. This is a simpler low-cost design and goes quite well with the 3D printed enclosure. Finally, in addition to the built-in ultrasonic distance sensor for sensing door status and car status, Open Garage 2.0 has also added screw pin pads for a magnetic switch sensor, like this one. This is a more classic way of sensing garage door status. The firmware allows you to make use of either or both of the sensors and define the sensor logic you prefer. In terms of software, we have just released Open Garage firmware 1.2.0. The biggest change is in the cloud connection options. This firmware supports both Blink Cloud Connection and OpenThings Cloud or OTC Connection. OTC is based on our own OpenThings framework. In contrast to Blink, which only supports operations like checking door status and car status and trigger garage door action, OTC gives you the full access to the built-in user interface remotely, including changing settings and viewing log data remotely. Now let me give you a quick walkthrough of the setup of Open Garage, including cloud connections. To begin, take out the door button cable that's included in the Open Garage package. The cable has two separate wires inside. Use a wire stripper to carefully strip the two wires and expose about 1 to 2 inches of copper wire. Next, take a look at the back of the Open Garage controller. The two bottom screws are labeled door button wire 1 and wire 2. Use a screwdriver to untighten these two screws. Insert one of the copper wires through the wiring hole on the 3D printed enclosure Use a tweezer or needle nose plier to wrap the wire around the screw for at least one full turn. Then tighten the screw. Make sure the wire makes a good contact with the pin pad on the circuit board. If there's any extra exposed copper wire, you can clip it to avoid it making contact with any other exposed solder pins on the circuit board. Then do the same for the other wire. There's no polarity of the two wires. On the other side of the cable, strip the wires the same way and these should go to the garage door button terminals on your garage opener system. For details, please refer to your garage door system's user menu. Now let's set up Wi-Fi connection for Open Garage. To begin, take out the micro USB cable in the Open Garage uh, package. You will also need a USB power adapter. Insert this end of the micro USB cable to the Open Garage through the micro USB port here and the other end of the micro USB cable should be plugged into the USB power adapter. If this is the first time you powered on Open Garage, the blue LED on the circuit board will blink rapidly about twice per second. This indicates the device is in Wi-Fi access point or AP mode. In AP mode, the device will broadcast an open Wi-Fi network. The SSID is OG underscore followed by six letters. Use your phone, laptop, or iPad, 
Go to the Wi-Fi settings, find this Wi-Fi network, and connect to it. It will prompt you to sign in, which brings out the Open Garage Wi-Fi configuration page. If you don't see this page, you can always open a browser and type in the IP address 192.168.4.1 and it will bring up the same Wi-Fi configuration page. Here it shows you a list of nearby Wi-Fi routers detected. You can either choose one of them or directly type in the Wi-Fi SSID, then the password of your Wi-Fi router. If you already have a cloud connection token, which I will explain shortly, you can enter them right here. If not, you can always configure this later. Finally, click on Submit. It will take about 10 to 30 seconds to complete the Wi-Fi connection. Usually at the end of this configuration, it will show you the IP address it obtained from your Wi-Fi router. This is called the device IP or local IP. If you don't see this, don't worry. The Open Garage user manual explains a few other ways you can obtain this uh, device IP. After the Wi-Fi configuration is completed, every time you power on Open Garage, it will automatically connect to your Wi-Fi router. When connecting, the blue LED will blink slowly. As soon as it's connected, the blue LED will turn off and only blinks once every 5 seconds when it's reading the distance sensor value. Now using your phone or laptop or iPad, type in the device IP. You should see the Open Garage built-in user interface. At the home page, you can see the garage door status, car status, distance sensor value, switch sensor value if it's installed and enabled, and cloud connection status. In the Edit Options page, you will see a lot of uh, settings you can change. Please refer to the Open Garage user menu for details. In the last part of this video, I'll explain the cloud connection options which allow you to remotely access your Open Garage. As I mentioned before, with firmware 1.2.0, you can choose to use either Blink cloud connection or OTC connection. The main advantage of Blink is that it supports push notification, but that requires you to have the Blink legacy app installed on your phone. If you don't already have the legacy app installed, it's no longer available in the App Store. If you're an iOS user, you're out of luck. And if you're an Android user, you can still find the legacy app APK online and install it manually. Without Blink legacy app, you can still use the Blink token with our Open Garage mobile app or Open Garage web app. It just won't support push notification. Now the main advantage of OTC is that it gives you full access to the Open Garage built-in web interface remotely. On the other hand, it doesn't support push notification and it hasn't been tested as extensively as Blink. In any case, I'll explain how to get a cloud token and how you can use the cloud token for remote access. To begin, if you don't already have an account on opensprinkler.com, you should go to opensprinkler.com and register for an account. Then go to openthings.io. Use your opensprinkler.com login and password to log in. Once you're in, on the dashboard, you can see two links. One is for Blink and the other is for OTC. Let's start with Blink token. Type in a descriptive name to help you remember what device this is or where it's installed. Then click Add New Device. This will generate a Blink token. Similarly, if you decide to use OTC, go to this link. Again, type in a descriptive name, then click Add New Device. This will generate an OTC token. Now go to your Open Garage Devices web interface. Click Options, the Integration tab. Click Enable Cloud Connection. If you want to use Blink token, choose Blink and copy-paste your Blink token here. And if you want to use OTC, choose OTC and copy-paste your OTC token here. Once it's done, submit the changes, and you must reboot Open Garage for the cloud connection to be effective. Next, to use the Open Garage mobile app, install it through the App Store. 
click Proceed without logging in. Then add a device via Blink Token. Copy paste your Blink Token here. You also need to customize the Blink server name and port because the token you generated is on openthings.io and that's not the official Blink server. Our Blink server name is blink.openthings.io and the port number is 8080. This will add the device and you can now remotely control Open Garage even when you are outside of your home. Similarly, you can add a device via OTC token. Finally, let me briefly show you the Open Garage web app. You don't need to install this app. Instead, you just go to the link of the web app. Here again, you can add a device by using its Blink token or OTC token. You can manage multiple devices, reorder them. You can trigger garage door action directly here. Or you can select device and click Go To, which will set the selected Open Garage as the current device. If you have chosen to use OTC connection, there is an additional device homepage button that becomes available. You can click it to access the device remotely, which allows you to change settings or view log data. Again, this ability to access device homepage remotely is only available if you are using OTC, and it's unfortunately not available for Blink. One last tip, you can bookmark this page or add this page to your home screen so the web app can work almost like a native app. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.